Okay, I see that now. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I am Sylvia Lee, and I'll be presenting today um, preparation for diatom taxonomic certification level one. Um, for the past year or so, we've been I've been chairing the taxonomic certification committee for diatoms, along with my colleagues Sarah Spalding, David Burge, Mark Edlin, Julianne Heinlein, Allison Minerovic, and Jan Stevenson. And we thought that it would be a good idea to start a webinar series on communicating um, and building a community uh, where we could share information about diatoms. So I would like for you all to um, think of some uh, webinar topics that you would like to see um, as part of this webinar series. And we will take um, those ideas at the end and any other questions that you may have. All right. So I'll just begin with um, a little bit of background information. Um, this certification program um, has its beginnings in um, that the EPA raised um, concerns about taxonomic consistency in national data sets. Um, large data sets um, like the EPA's National Aquatic Resource Surveys, they require uh, multiple analysts to um, contribute data um, to the data sets. And the methods for assigning species names uh, tended to differ among the analysts based on their training or the references that were available to them. And one of the consequences of this issue was that EPA diatom data were removed or not published on the National Aquatic Resource Survey webpage. And it has been a barrier for diatoms to go from research indicators to actual practical use in uh, bioassessments. So in order to address um, this issue, there was a special session convened at the 24th North American Diatom Symposium in 2017. Um, there were lots of people interested in developing a certification program. Um, so we assembled a working group and that working group elected a group of seven, um, the Taxonomic Certification Committee. And this committee um, meets bi-weekly to develop and implement the program. And diatoms are not the only group of organisms that have taxonomic issues. Um, Macroinvertebrate certification program was developed to address similar consistency um, issues in taxonomy. And so um, the ta Diatom Taxonomic Certification Committee um, started out um, collaborating with um, the Society for Freshwater Science um, and the Stroud Water Research Center, which administers the macroinvertebrate certification program. And through this collaboration, uh, we um, learn from their development history and their current practices. And instead of reinventing the wheel, we thought it would be good to leverage the existing um, Stroud website and society infrastructure for um, implementing the diatom certification program. And to get us started, um, we wrote a grant um, proposal to the Society for Freshwater Science Long Range Planning Committee. And we successfully um, received some funding um, to create the um, images um, that are part of the level one exam and to set up those exams online. And we, um, some of the uh, certification committee members attended the National Monitoring Conference in Denver earlier this year. Um, we communicated that certification is one of the tools we now have to um, address the taxonomic, uh, taxonomic consistency issues and to uh, make progress in um, being able to use diatoms in assessment. And at this workshop, um, we found a lot of agency staff have active interest 
um, and need to understand how to work with diatom data. And I think a, a message that resonated with folks at this workshop is that the reason we're putting in these efforts to develop tools like certification is, um, as Mark Edland, our colleague, put it, um, we are making the science better. It's all about the science. Uh, following that meeting, um, the next several months, uh, we did some beta testing of the level one exam. First, it, um, it was the Society for Freshwater Science in Salt Lake City, Utah. And then um, at the Ecology and Systematics of Diatoms course at Iowa Lakeside Lab. And finally, at the North American Diatom Symposium. So far, 42 people have taken the test and 14 of um, those folks are level one certified diatomists to date. And here you could see an example of what the certification um, physically looks like. So I wanted to go over a little bit about um, what it means to be level one certified. Um, we wanted to make sure that there was a transparent um, understanding of what level one means. And uh, the committee came up with this wording that level one certifi certified diatomists have an up-to-date working knowledge of the diagnostic characteristics of accepted North American inland diatom genera. And they have a practical base for proficiency in performing taxonomic identifications of inland diatoms at the genus level. And that level one is the first step to certification at the species level. And this certification is valid for five years. Um, unless the certification was obtained during the pilot phase, the beta testing phase, um, those are valid for three years. And we are planning to have one to th three additional certification levels for more advanced skills, and those are in development. So here is um, the way that you can schedule an exam. Um, this is the Stroud um, Research Center website, and the links are provided on the um, slide there. And when you go to the website, um, you can schedule an exam either at a physical testing center or online. And you'll find some information about registering for an exam. And you can also um, complete an interest form to do the test remotely. Um, the next uh, physical um, center for um, taking the exam that we have planned is the um, SFS, Society for Freshwater Science, meeting in um, June of next year in Madison, Wisconsin. So a little more about the remote testing option. Um, ideally, you should allow three to four weeks of lead time to schedule an exam, and this is just because the um, Taxonomic Certification Program Coordinator has other duties, um, especially during the summer field season. Um, and uh, as I said, there is the link to the interest form, and you can submit a payment for that exam online um, or by check. And then um, a couple requirements for um, using this remote testing option is that um, the coordinator, uh, Mike Brumall, will be monitoring you during the exam by webcam um, and Zoom. So you must have a camera um, attached to your computer and also be able to use Zoom. And all of us are on Zoom today, so that should not be an issue. Next here is where you could find the payment information on the Stroud website. And for the diatom exam, if you are an SFS member, um, it's $75. And for non-members, the exam is $100. 
And here's more information about paying online, um, either through PayPal, or you can mail a check to um, this address here. Um, to find um, links to practice the practice quiz and study material, we recommend going to the Diatoms of North America website, which is diatoms.org. And if you click on the practitioners tab on the top, you can find more information. Um, and you can um, just go to the web page where the um, meet this webinar information um, was found. Um, and you can find links on the side there um, for that Stroud website, um, as well as more information about certification, including um, the wording that we talked about earlier, the um, fees and the, how long the uh, certification is valid. There is a link to the practice quiz, and then those two links at the bottom, um, the level one diatom genus list and the test notes um, are study material. So here is the list of diatom genera that you'll find when you click that link. And here I highlighted that um, copy and paste is your friend because you can use this list not only to study um, for this exam, but also during the exam um, when, when you are entering in the, um, your answers. And um, if you copy and paste, you can minimize the, um, the amount of spelling errors. And this table is provided to be a guide um, for how to study for the difficult genera. Um, and this is because um, these more difficult genera will appear more frequently on the exam. And so it has a list of genera um, organized by their morphology group. For example, you see here the symmetrical Birefid genera, and then notes about um, which um, of the genera um, that are similar and, and challenging to distinguish. And uh, we have the um, three columns there on the right that show how we weighted the number of um, images that will appear on the exam. So here are some exam logistics. The exam is 60 questions total, and there are a total of 120 minutes or two hours um, to complete the exam. Um, the exam is open notes, so you can use um, websites like the Diatoms uh, of North America website, um, your own reference materials, books. The only um, resource that you cannot use is another person. And the passing grade is a 95% to be certified. And you are able to um, resit the exam um, for no cost if you get um, close to that, which is 90% or higher. Each question is a collage of light micrographs and scanning electron micrographs. And I note here that the scanning electron micrograph is not always diagnostic. We included a SEM on every collage to be um, equal um, for all of the questions. And I'll explain a little bit more about the collage in the next slides. You can um, get the same genus question more than once. So um, the same genus can appear on the exam uh, more than one time. And a good way to practice getting used to the style and structure of the exam, um, taking it online, is to go to the practice quiz. Um, the link is right there. Um, and it is a set of 15 questions. And um, these questions are um, the same no matter how many times you take them. Um, the questions just come, come up in a different order. 
Um, and that is um, similar to the actual exam where you will get the questions in a random order. You are also allowed to have multiple screens. Um, so you can have the exam open in one screen and then um, on, a, on a second screen, you could have um, a website or your um, another reference um, on the second screen. And um, the diatoms of North America website has been updated to complement the exam so that um, the information for the genera that are in, on the exam um, are complete and provides a primary uh, reference source um, for the exam. Here's a little tip about um, using the Diatoms of North America website during the exam. If you click on the genera tab on the top, you will get a list of all the genera. Um, these are um, in more genera than that will appear on the exam. Um, but you have a list to know which of these genera will be on the exam. And um, a neat feature of this list is if you um, click, if you hover, actually hover over the names of um, any of these genera, you will get um, this mouse over pop-up of um, the guide points of each genus. And you can quickly check the image as well as the um, important guide points that are used to um, identify um, each genus. All right, here is what the um, image collages look like when you take the exam. So you can see that it is a composite of both LM and SEM images. Um, you will also have um, a, a time bar at the top so that um, you can see how much time remains. And once that time is up, um, the exam um, will end automatically if you have not um, submitted the exam yet. And again, <clears throat> excuse me, for the, for the collage, um, again, I wanted to note that the SEM is not always diagnostic um, and you should use your best judgment to either use um, or ignore that SEM. There's only um, some genera that really require the SEM to be, um, to be able to know what genus it is. Okay, and then um, if you scroll below the image collage, you can click on um, display previously viewed questions so that you can skip and go back to the questions. Um, so you don't have to um, answer every single question um, at, uh, as they come. You can go back to your previous questions. However, you cannot see your previous answer until you click on the question number. Um, so you'll see the image collages, but not your answer that you submitted. Um, so it is a good tip to um, keep track of your answers on paper um, to know which um, question number to go back to, to um, check your answers and um, or the ones that you, you um, decided to skip and go back to later. Then when you are finished uh, with the exam, you click on the Finish Now button and then Confirm Finish. Um, and as I said earlier, if you run out of time, the exam will automatically end. So once you submit the exam, you'll see your score immediately, um, but the proctor will confirm and email your final score to you um, in case there were any um, small spelling errors or um, other things that may have um, uh, developed an error during the exam. 
And on the real exam, this image here is showing um, uh, the practice quiz, but on the real exam, a 57 out of 60 is a passing grade of 95%. And once you submitted your um, answers, if you have any incorrect answers, um, those questions will show up below your score. Um, it will show the image collage, and then it will show um, the incorrect answer. Um, it will not show the correct answer. And again, here is the, certifi the certificate um, that you will get by email um, once you are successfully uh, certified at level one. And uh, finally, at the uh, Stroud website, um, you're able to click on this link, the Certified Taxonomist, to view a list of um, Certified Taxonomists. And I could show that um, a little bit more in detail um, by actually going to the website, but this is my last slide. Um, feel free to ask any questions about the level one exam. Um, we welcome your topic suggestions for the next webinar. You can um, tell us now or you can email them to us um, later at diatomtcc at gmail.com. And these uh, webinar recordings will be posted on Diatoms of North America. So you'll have those as your reference. So thank you and um, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Sylvia. And I, I wanted to acknowledge too that we have a wide um, variety of um, audience here. We have um, people who might wanna take the exam, we have managers, we have people maybe that want to learn more about diatoms. So, or, or how, you know, what even to do with this information. So feel free to ask us questions that cross any of those different parts of how this um, exam fits into the rest of the way you might need to use it. And to ask a question, you should, if you have the um, chat open, you should be able to unmute yourself, or you can ask a question by the chat window and I can read it to everyone. I'm not hearing any questions. Hi, Sarah and Sylvia, this is Gina. Hi, Gina. Hi, I just wanna thank you and everyone else on the committee for all the work and effort you've put into this. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Gina. Gina. Okay, there's a chat, something on the chat window. Um, someone would like to have a general talk about the uses of diatom identification. Okay, I'm writing that down. Do you want to respond to that, Sylvia, or do you? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good suggestion, and I'll um, write that down. Um, we can think about a lot of different uses of diatom identification for research and um, assessment. Um, I yeah, I could say a little bit too, just that um, you know, dep depending on where you're from. Um, there are a variety of um, federal, state, local, um, EU, um, uh, international country countries that use diatom 
identification to determine the quality of water. And that can be rivers, lakes, um, diatoms are also used in uh, historical reconstructions of, of water bodies. So that's kind of a general bit. There's another question. Um, what happens if one of the taxa and the images used for the ID, used for the exam changes its genus at some point? That's yes. a good one because we have um, a, a fluid uh, nomenclature within diatoms. Yes, so um, we made sure that the Diatoms of North America website um, reflects the current understanding of um, genus names, um, although there are some updates in the pipeline um, that are not reflected yet on the website um, because they are significant changes. Um, but what is on the website right now are the, um, should complement the answers for the exam. And the study material that we provide um, is the um, names that should be used um, for the exam whenever you take that exam. Okay, and how about is the certificate valid in other countries? And I would say this certificate is, um, is authorized by the Society for Freshwater Science, and so, um, which is a, an international um, society. So yes, it should be <laughs> recognized. Um, whether that happens, I'm not, sure how that'll play out, but if anyone has any issues or concerns about how this is treated in, in your country, you can contact us at the TCC. We'd like to um, help with taxonomic consistency um, in, in all countries. I know that some countries have some other programs for maintaining consistency, so it might be sort of a case-by-case -case basis. Um, another question, is the exam available for students or early career researchers doing diatom research? Yes, <laughs> it's available to anyone. You can be um, very early in your career, you can be late in your career. This exam is open to everyone. Um, what does a certification allow you to do? Uh, what's the advantage of the certification? Local, statewide, and countrywide. Sylvia, you wanna take that one? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, this certification um, was originally meant to um, help us obtain more consistent taxonomy for bioassessment programs. And there are bioassessment programs at local, state, and, and national scales. Um, the advantage of certification um, is that um, it allows us to have a venue for training and communication um, about um, diatom taxonomy and ecology. Um, and it also gives um, taxonomists, analysts working in consulting firms, um, be able to show that they are committed to professional development and learning um, about uh, diatom taxonomy and that they have the training and skills um, to be able to do um, diatom uh, taxonomic um, work. And so it also provides managers um, a way to determine um, when they contract the analysts if they have the skills um, to do um, the work that they um, are contracting. For this next question, um, Sylvia, could you switch over your screen to show Diatoms of North America and the practitioners page? Sure. And while you're doing that, I'll read the question and start with it. Um, so this relates back to the, as, as 
there are transfers within um, names. So in regard to changes in genus, is there a highly visible heads up or some kind of flag for these changes on diatoms of North America? Um, yes, <laughs> there are two places where you can see how our names changing. So here Sylvia is showing us the practitioners page. Um, so if you go there um, and, and this first header taxon updates will show you not only pages that are new um, but they're ones that have changed so here this first row we've got um, Sylvia can you mouse over that new where it says new um, it's the first te text about you yeah mm -hmm. so there's the name of the genus and above it it's a new page um, and maybe scroll down a little bit. Um, there is also a place where um, if there's been an update, it will show that something has changed on that page. Well, we haven't had any for a while, but another place that you can see um, changes, if you go to resources per, for practitioners, um, that middle um, box says what has changed on diatoms of North America. So um, Sylvia, if you go ahead and click the read more, um, you can find things that have um, any page that has changed and you can find the what it used to look like, what the page appeared as before there was a change. Um, so we're trying to ad address that in two ways. Okay, another question. Um, would the next certification levels be separated by probable uses? So um, either regional or habitats like streams versus lakes or planktic versus benthic? Yes, I think that is a good idea. We are um discussing the ways that the certification levels can be separated. Um, we think it would be a good idea to have um, benthic versus planktic diatoms or maybe regional like the macroinvertebrate um, certification exams, um, but we are continuing those discussions to make sure that um, the skills we are testing in the certification exams um, matches um, the um, objectives of the um, certification program. Good questions. Um, go ahead and put any more uh, questions into the chat window. We'd also like to have um, invite um, everyone here to make any suggestions or requests of how we can use this format. Um, that is a Zoom format that's open to everyone around the world to be able to further um, our knowledge about diatoms and the way they're used. Uh, for example, um, do people want to have a session about a particular genus? Like, what is agnanthidium and what do I need to know about agnanthidium if I'm an analyst? Or, um, how do I make a voucher flora? Um, how, um, how do I get the skills to do some of these things? things that we're asking people to do in order to have uh, uh, consistent taxonomy across um, labs and analysts and, and across years. So, um, and I imagine that others have ideas about that too, so um, you can let them, let us know here or you can um, contact us later with your um, requests and suggestions. Okay, um, we have the question, 
do other countries face the consistency problems you've presented here? Do they have certification programs? Um, I, I don't know a lot about them, but um, there are some in um, the UK that are run by um, ring tests. So for example, analysts that are um, doing work for part of the um, European wa uh, Water Directive Framework. I said that in wrong order. But uh, their analysts um, every year identify diatoms on a slide and their results are ranked against the experts and other analysts. It's part of a training program to keep everyone up to speed. It's part of a learning program. But yes, there is an, an effort um, also in, um, in the Scandinavian countries, in Norway, there are uh, organized, um, it's not so much certification programs, it's um, as tests, which analysts need to take on an annual basis. So it is, um, it is quite rigorous, I think. Okay, we've got an idea for a future webinar. Maybe uh, Diatom ID 101. I know that when I was first starting, it was hard to know where to even start in learning the genera without getting overwhelmed. Maybe a webinar could go over some of the basics and how you would suggest starting the learning process. Um, so that's great and would be helpful for us. If you're somebody that wants a Diatom ID 101, let us know so we can get an idea of how many of you are out there or how many people that you know about that would be interested in something like that. Um, it's a little bit limited about what we can do in this format. There are some formal courses um, and we can direct you to those, but um, we can also do some things online if we know what is it that people need and how can we structure it so that it's helpful. Oh, all right, somebody's interested in Diatom 101. Great, let us know. <laughs> you can let us know in the chat or um, send us an email and we'll keep track of that uh, response. Okay, um, how do you determine the genera to put on the test list? That has an, a detailed answer, which Sylvia can respond to. Yes, so we determine which genera to put on the test list um, by um, looking at um, national survey data of rivers and lakes. And we um, looked at those data sets um, for which genera are um, uh, commonly um, or uh, always included in those exam in those um, surveys. And uh, we went through those lists and uh, ranked um, those genera by how common they are. And um, also we looked at how um, those genera are, um, dif how difficult those genera are um, to identify based on um, some statistical analysis um, of how the, um, how analyst um, becomes a factor when predicting um, their abundance. And so um, we looked at um, that information and put together um, a list of, of about, I think it's about 103 um, genera um, that we thought, um, based on our expert opinion and from the data, um, which genera should be on the test list. Thank you. Another interested person in Diatom ID 101. I have inherited a Diatom data set and becoming more interested in learning taxonomy. Um, 
that just reminds me that I know that uh, many people might not be diatom experts or even want to be diatom experts, but they have diatom data and they want to know how to deal with it and how to interpret it and, and what are the things that I can do with these names and what are the things that I can't do. And, um, and so um, those are some of the things that I think this, this group that we can help as a community to um, spread these tools. Okay, another interest in Diatom ID 101. Is the list of the most common genera ranked and available? Yes, they are. So if you go to the exam study guide, um, you, one of the um, exam uh, study tables that we provide right here, download level one test notes. You can click on that and you will get to a table where the um, genera are ranked by um, their abundance. So that's how common they were in the um, surveys um, as well as their difficulty. And here um, you can read about the ways that we um, determine the rankings. Great questions. I know we have some members of the Diatom TCC online. Do any of you have anything that you would like to um, contribute to the discussion or add to what we said so far? This is Julianne. Um, I don't have much to add right now. Uh, thank you, Sylvie and Sarah. I think you guys did a great job with this. And I, I do like Zoom. This is a very nice and easy um, way to access people and share information. I, I, I like it. I like it for future webinars and, and discussions. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. And the thanks from Susan Jackson. Thanks for joining us, Susan. And um, Susan says, a general comment, your team have thought of everything. <laughs> I don't know. Um, excellent work, but uh, we greatly appreciate you, Susan. Um, this would not have been a possible without your um, support and urging to um, work on this problem and find a good solution. I just think this whole um, um, effort has been such fun to work on. Uh, it's great to work with good colleagues and um, and now we're connecting to the rest of the world and that we hope that we can really make this a strong community for advancing our science. Okay, um, is there a long-term goal to have every diatom anal analysis lab in North America certified, i.e. from a California Water Board's perspective, should or could this potentially become a requirement for our contracted labs in the future? Um, yes, that can be up to you as, this, as a state contracting lab to say, we will um, only contract to labs that have um, level one or level two certifications, or I should reword that, it's not labs that are certified, it's individuals. So um, as a state or as a agency, um, you can say in your task agreements that the analysts must be certified. Um, and that's, um, we are, I think, getting to that point um, where certification will be um, required to demonstrate 
the, the analysts are maintaining a level of professional um, um, certification and, um, and ongoing training. And I can mention that we already have um, agencies um, requiring um, a certified analyst for their contracts and uh, requirements or a um, uh, qualification um, on a job posting um, for a cert certification. Okay, um, a question from Rob. Hi, Rob. <laughs> Are there methods you use at the Lakeside class for ID, that's the Ecology and Systematics of Diatoms course that's offered in the summer, um, that you can share on DONA? Um, sure, we can share all kinds of methods, and I, I think you might, there's all, there are processing methods and there are uh, voucher flora methods. Um, we can certainly post those on, on Dona and um, I'll go ahead and put that in as a request for the um, practitioners page. The, the Lakeside class actually uses Dona a lot for ID. Um, and also the um, class um, final uh, project is to develop a taxon page for Dona. Well, I, I should add that um, in collaboration with Mark Edland, the whole genesis of the Diatoms of North America was the Lakeside class. We got tired of updating the notes every year, so we made a website. Um, we'll, Julianne asks if we'll discuss the upcoming Society for Freshwater Science workshop with the group. Yes, um, in, for the meeting in 2020 in Madison, Wisconsin, the Taxonomic Certification Committee, we will be offering a training on something. What is it? <laughs> Voucher flora. <laughs> Voucher flora. Um, is that... Um, Gosh, I don't know where that's posted right now. It might not be posted. Um, there will be a one-day workshop. It will be a Sunday before the meeting. Um, I don't have the dates of that SFS ASLO meeting right now. Maybe somebody can put that on the chat by looking that up. It's June 7th. Meredith tells me it's June 7th. Would you put that on the, on the chat, maybe the link? Um, it'll be an all-day meeting. You, can, uh, you can't register yet, but you should be able to. And in that meeting, we're um, going to have a practical workshop on how to maintain taxonomic consistency through a voucher flora. So how do you take images of diatoms and um, work with them in order to make a document that different analysts can use in order to be consistent within a study, across studies, and to archive the work for um, all others to see. Um, Sylvia has brought up um, a discussion of what is a voucher flora that's on DONA, and, and what we're going to do in the workshop is um, show um, participants how to make a, how to work with thousands of images quickly and efficiency and efficiently because um, that's what we need to do is apply kind of big data approaches to managing images. Um, again, if you have more questions about the meeting, please contact us. Um, David it, um, has a good suggestion. Uh, while not exactly a course for beginners, Familiarizing yourself with the glossary on Dona can, is a comprehensive, it's not quite comprehensive. We hope it will be comprehensive. It's a place to get initial background and develop some questions for a Diatom 101 session. And Sylvia's pulling up the glossary um, um, where we 
um, add terms, I'd like to make a shout out to Rob Kimmick here, who has done a uh, really immense job to help um, standardize the, the glossary section of diatoms of North America. Um, question about will this recording be posted? Yes, um, we can post it later today. Um, I will make a posting on uh, Diatoms of North America and we'll go ahead and send out a, a email blast to Facebook and EPA colleagues and Diatom L that of where that link is. Um, thanks, Rob. <laughs> so if there are not any more questions right now, um, I think we'll conclude this meeting. And I'd like to really thank everyone for joining and um, Please feel free to contact us about anything if you didn't get a chance to ask or you think of something later. Um, and we hope to keep advancing this, this discussion and this diatom community. How about you, Sylvia? Do you have anything else? Um, nope. I thank everyone for um, joining us today. We had over 45 participants, I think, at one point. Um, so we're happy with the showing and we hope you will join us in our next webinar um, and send us your um, topic suggestions. Okay. Thank you everyone. And with that, we'll conclude this first meeting um, by the Diatom Taxonomic Certification Committee. Bye. Bye. <laughs>